I started the recording. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second half. Tonight's working sessions for Trading Foundations. This is the Intermediate Advanced Session. So what have we done so far? <clears throat> if you want to go back to the first recording, those of you listening to the recording, um, we talked about market conditions. We went through the watch list, kind of found some stocks that we think, hey, these are, these are setting up. These are potentials um, across a couple of different sectors. So those are the ones that we want to explore. We have a little bit of time we want to put into the trading plan tonight. So if you haven't started, this week is section one. This is your final pass in the year 2024. Your final chance. So what I said on Sunday, and I'm going to keep saying it this week, this is this is your last chance for, for a full iteration on your trading plan eight weeks we're all going to push together i'm going to spend some time in fact we maybe we'll do that first maybe we'll just spend a little bit of time on the trading plan and then we'll go straight to trades i was thinking about searching but we have enough to look at so maybe what i'll do is i'll kick searching to thursday um, in the second half <clears throat> and we'll just look at trades today okay uh, with that in mind, our disclaimers, keep in mind, of course, this is for education and illustrative purposes only. We're not brokers. We're not advisors. We don't give recommendations. We don't give advice. Those are the those are the rules. Let's go to the platform. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, look at this, this watch list of ours. This watch list of ours, speaking of, I'm, I'm making a note to myself. I'm making a note to myself to update the watch list. Okay. Update MWG watch list. That's going to happen. We've got some great setups. Let's let's start from the beginning. No, sorry. I already said I'm going to do this first. Trading plan. If you have been prioritizing your trading plan, um, if you have been tri prioritizing, that means you've been through a few passes. Full. You have a full trading plan. You've gone through it at least two, if not three times, and you have a full trading plan. Then what you did is you went through and you evaluated each section one at a time. And you said from one to 10, how strong is this? How strong do I feel about this? The way this defines me, my routines, right? And then you, you write it down. So the possible score for your trading plan is an 80. That's the that's a perfect trading plan is an 80. Okay. And then what? Well, once you've gone through that, you find the lowest two numbers. And you prioritize. And you pick one. You work on it. And then you pick the other and you work on it. And essentially, you just start to focus. But what I'm saying right now is I want all of us working on here. Personal info. This is critically important because we're going to anchor to our strengths. Right? Those are the things that we're going to make sure that our rules are playing to. The timing, the signals that we take, how we take them, the types of trades we built. You need to know your strengths so that you can emphasize your strengths in your trading. Otherwise, what's the point of having strengths? If you're right, like, oh, I'm great at that. Oh, so are you doing that a lot? You're like, no, yeah, it comes and goes as it pleases. <laughs> right? What? So that's important because that's going to help us build. That's going to help us build trading rules. These are our systems with trading rules. All of this is going to come from that. Now, the second thing you're going to do is weaknesses. That's important because we need to set goals that improve weaknesses. So whatever the weaknesses are, we're going to work, we're going to work, for, work on them. The rest of these are just statements, a commitment and discipline statement, a mission statement. That's like a business, right? What are your, what are your core values and your principles? Um, and the vision statement, that one's a little more colorful. That's your, that's your... Trading, if done right, should change your life. 
That's that's what we believe. It should change your life. Retire sooner, retire better, produce a consistent income, right? These are, this is what trading should give us the ability to do if we commit to it and we learn it. Okay, what does life look like at that point? That's your vision statement. What does life look like then? So you you know what you're working towards. That's the colorful part because yeah, that's the motivation that helps. Now, what have we provided for you? You're wondering. So that's that's a lot. Okay. This does not need to be too much. I I put four strengths, three weaknesses as a sample. An ability to maintain discipline and follow rules. That's a strength. Great. So make sure you define really concrete rules so that the rule accounts for a lot. I have a good idea of what my trading flow looks and feels like, meaning when I'm trading at my best. And if I know when I'm trading at my best, I also want to know when I'm not, right? When am I impatient or frustrated and I should be like, whoa, whoa, dial back, buddy. I also have a pretty good idea of how to get myself into that flow, right? How do I how do I find that confidence in the plan and that balance in my confidence in how I manage risk? I don't panic easily, even after a small string of losers. I don't love too many, but right, these are the kinds of things that. These are these are traits that we want, right? What are weaknesses? I tend to be influenced by preferential bias. Meaning what? I mean, I, I latch on to my own. These are actually, I think these are actually mine that I put for my... <laughs> um, these are true for me, for sure. Um, I latch on to my own opinion sometimes, right? Um, and, and it's like you start when you have an opinion sometimes, um, right? <laughs> sometimes you... Uh, um, you look for information to confirm that information. And, and so, yeah. Uh, weaknesses, rush to judgment. That's not always a weakness. You know, sometimes we just trade fast. I sometimes suffer from outcome bias, letting thoughts wander to the end of the trade. What does that do? It causes loss of focus in the real time. Now I have these weaknesses. Guess what? I can set a goal about this. I can set a goal about this. And I can set a goal about this. Three goals from three mistakes. Trying to make myself better. The aggregation of marginal improvement. We're not, when people think like they're going to become better traders, they're like, I need to change my signals. I need to change my signals. Let's change my signals. Like, That's not how you become a better trader. What are you talking about? This is how we become a better trader. We, we, we get all of this and, and we, we're building ourselves and our characteristics, our trading uh, um, dynamics that are internal let's talk about the statements and then we'll go look at the trades commitment and discipline i'm committed to, this is this is uh this is just kind of a uh hey write it out i'm committed to becoming a profitable trader i'll dedicate myself to the process i'll put i'll put the effort and the time necessary to create a thorough business plan that has rules and methodologies that will produce the results i'm continuing to monitoring improving my process adjusting my plan yeah, okay, that's not a lot. Just kind of giving yourself something to hold yourself accountable to. Um, mission statement. Now, this is one that I worked on for a while. This is mine. This is like uh, uh, I took a, how do you write a mission statement for a business and I applied it to trading. My mission is to become a consistent, disciplined, and well-organized organization trader who generates yearly profits with diverse trading strategy. These strategies are adaptable relying on strict risk and money management techniques. My objective is to be flexible in my approach to the market, ensuring effectiveness in trading despite volatile or changing market conditions. I'll be vigilant in using well-thought-out and defined rule-based systems. Rule-based systems? Where does that come from? Oh, that comes from the sample plan. One full set of rules per system. <laughs> Rule-based systems at all times in order to eliminate emotions from my trading decisions. I'm not trying to trade like a robot. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have emotions in my decisions. This was paramount for me. 
to define it that way, you guys. Like that's that's a that's a important differentiator from a lot of people who are like, you can't have emotions when you trade. You just got to be like a robot. Like I, I don't believe that at all. You know that. I don't think that. I think that you're. I think we recognize the chimp is just behind us all the time. You're never quite sure if you got that cage shut all the way, right? Like, like get it locked. Even when it is, sometimes he can rattle it so loud and violently that it still scares you a little bit, right? Like, the emotions are always going to be there. It's our objective to keep him in the cage, keep the professor at the computer, make sure, right? That's that's the objective. Vision statement. My trading success will create financial independence for me. That's great. Uh, I'll retire 10 years earlier than expected while maintaining the standard of living I've come to enjoy. Further, my success will enable me to achieve three long-term life goals. Have additional income to take multiple vacations every year, travel the world, create College educations for each of this is not me, you guys. <laughs> I ain't got no grandchildren. Um, this is this will be me soon. No, not soon. In a decade, maybe. Uh, no, not even that. Fifteen years from now. Fifteen years from now. And have the time and means necessary to give both time and money to my favorite charity, the Make a Wish Foundation. Who doesn't love the Make a Wish Foundation? So when when trading gets hard, when you get frustrated, what do we do? When trading gets hard and we get frustrated and we say, why am I doing this? What do we do? We come here. We come here and we say, this is what I'm trying to do with my mission statement. And this is what it's going to lead me to with my vision statement. Um, it's got to be strong because trading can take. I mean, I, I think I'd like to think that we do a good job of keeping things real. We highlight and emphasize psychology early on, but I can tell you, trading can take you dark places. I've seen it. I've been a part of it, um, and and yeah, you can really second guess yourself, and it 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 easily can bleed outside of trading and into other things if you're not careful, right? Like. You know, um, a, a trader one time said, you get what you want out of trading. He was in an interview and the interviewer was like, so what do you, you're saying people who lose money want to lose money? And he's like, I'm saying you get what you want out of trading. He's not saying people wanted to lose money. He was saying what they wanted wasn't necessarily to make money. They wanted the thrill. They wanted, they, they thought more like a gamble than a trading, right? What's the difference between a trader and a gambler. Two words. Positive expectancy. That's the difference between a trader and a gambler. If somebody, if somebody, if I'm working with somebody and we go through their log and they have a negative expectancy, they're a gambler. They're gambling. They're throwing trades on, hoping something works. That's gambling. Right? Um, out here in Utah, you get on I-80, you drive west uh, about two hours. You run into a border town called Wendover, affectionately called Bendover, Utah. <laughs> right? And as you get closer, there's billboards. And the billboards will start to advertise. Loosest slots in town. 97% payout. <gasps> 97%? That's like, a, that's like an A. And I know you're like laughing, like, oh, come on, Scott. The Everything casinos do is backed by just so much research. It's sick because they make so much money, right, to, to get the formula of all that right. The temperature, the lighting, the, the fact that you're in a maze and you can't find your way out, um, right? There's just so many things that, that are... Well, it's, but there's also a negative expectancy. The longer you play, the worse it gets. 97 cent payout means for every time you get a dollar, put a dollar in, they give you 97 cents back over and over again. Negative expectancy. Positive expectancy is what, that's it. That's what we're looking for as traders. So, um, 
Questions, comments? Let's go look at trades. I told you we wanted to put a little bit of time into that. Let's let's build at least one trade tonight together um, that may become an alert. We've done it already before. Um, I'm looking at Apple. Technology is technology is kind of on the forefront, right, of what we saw. Was it? Maybe we didn't have that. Uh, oh, there we go. Tech and Nvidia lead stock market rebound. If we're going to see it continue, then that may be where it is. We already have things on in PLTR, right? Um, got into Apple today. Miguel said we already have PLTR. We already had talked about. TSM and NVIDIA, and those are both doing well. So what's left for me from tech, Apple. So that's one that I'm looking at. I'm going to maybe, let's let's talk about three and then we'll pick one. That's a little too early. Mm, that's maybe a little, I'm not sure. Uh, stop me if you think I'm going too fast. BK, we already have KKR and, and it's a little stall. This one looks a little better, but. This is so close to earnings. Eh? Be careful with anything financial because you're so close to earnings. Still waiting, still waiting, still pulling back. I would put CMG as my second. CMG. Sandy took this one already, she said. Now, what do we have? Whoops, that's not what I wanted. I want... I can actually... That's a continuation. So basically... From here, my objective would be to try to see if I could catch it at a lower price than we closed today. Let's look at today's regular price. We're going to pick one of these. I would say I'd try to catch it if possible back around maybe like 57.60. So if it opens tomorrow and comes down and then pops out of it, that's the way that we can catch that still, right? So we'll look at that for an alert. So Apple CMG. Let's look at one more as a possibility. Uh, fast and all, that's just so close to earnings. Otherwise, I would for sure like that. GE, no, not really there either. If you think we already have a winner and you want to put your vote in, put it in. Apple. Um, and CMG Burrito Factory. Not yet on, on Microsoft. Uh, a little too early. Tesla, kind of. Okay, I'll put it there. Tesla, if you guys force me. It's like forcing a kid to eat his vegetables. If you force me to, I'll build a trade on it, I guess. Uh, all right, let's vote. Apple. CMG, Tesla, um, 11 people, first to four, I think would probably win. So start putting your, start putting your votes out there. Thank you, Miguel, for recognizing that I'm pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. I appreciate, I appreciate you seeing me where I am in my journey. <laughs> oh. Okay. CMG, that's true, right? That's true. If no one else votes, then Lee's going to pick it with CMG. You can pick the one you traded already, Sandy and, and Miguel, or you can pick a different one. Dan says Apple. Um, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm excited to see where you guys point us because I don't know which one to pick. I'm not even going to vote. Oh, you already said Apple? Oh, I missed it. Sorry, David. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Apple's a David, or David's an Apple. PJ's an Apple. One, two, three. That's three for Apple. Curious on the parameters. Four for Apple. Okay. Um, it would uh, Maybe it's got to get to five, I guess. Uh, or it's got to go. Someone else has got to start talking about CMG. The race is on. Anybody else want to help shape it? Apple it is. Billy Ray. Billy Ray's like, I'll just come make the executive decision. Billy Ray is known for executive decisions around here. 
Apple it is. Let's go. I mean, I kind of feel like this is, this is, we put the stop below yesterday's low, right? 221.33. Let's get an alert. Let's get an alert doc ready. And we'll build it together. Teamwork to make the dream work. Am I right? Sandy, Sandy knows what I'm talking about. She's always in. Um, which, wait, which one is this? Have we done CMG? No, okay. CMG. 10-9, let's do it. Let's do it. This will be fun. Both. Picking up the boys. Be safe. Tell the boys we said hi. <laughs> we are bullish on everything. Good to see you, Miguel. Tom, let's talk about entry. So I would say maybe we give it a little bit above, but I would much prefer. Um, oh, no. I was looking, thinking of something else. This is just barely becoming good, I would say. 225, 224, 225.05 is a low and maybe up to like 226.55. 225.05 up to 226.55. That's, that's in that range, in this range, right? Our stochastics is oversold. We're, we're just looking to see if this thing can break resistance. It tried back here, and it's like, no. And then it ran all the way back up and tried, and it's like, no. And then it ran up and tried, and it's like, no. Ascending triangle. The buyers keep pushing it up. The sellers haven't pushed it down. So we're thinking, can the buyers bust this sucker loose? And if they do, where would it go? You know, I'm kind of thinking, like, one of these. This was... Uh, 210 to 237. That's a 27 point move. So if I'm going from 221, 27, that's 248. That's real close to 250. If I can bust out of that, I should get at least one of these, if not even one of these. So yeah, we'll call it 228.50. No, 248.50. Let's get. Let's get to the platform here, Apple, and we'll say 248.50. To the downside, we said something. Somebody said something. I think we could go all the way below that. 221, maybe a... Uh, Honestly, you could even just put it half a percent. That's about a buck twelve below the low. Uh, two twenty twenty. Two twenty twenty. Two. Two twenty twenty. That's a half a percent below the low as it's establishing as a support. It's about five points of risk for about twenty three. Ah, good to see you, Phil. Thanks for popping in. 220, 20 versus 248.50. So, yeah, what do we have here? We've got better than 4 to 1. What does our volatility look like? Now, great implied, or excuse me, great open interest. Tight spreads is what that looks like. Let's go take a peek at the vol. It's a little elevated, but not terrible. I'd probably still look at buying options, to be fair. Um, I mean, 38 days, that's not bad going out to November. I'm not going to hold to November. I'm just giving myself like a little less theta working against me. I'm probably going to go out of the money. I have no problem going even like 10 or 15 points out of the money. I kind of like, like these 240s right here. Bing! What do you guys think about these 240s? Uh, time frame. 
Did Miguel leave? I didn't even tell us what his trade was. We don't even know what his trade was. Is he still here? I'm all yelling at him. Come on, Miguel. We don't even know what your trade was. <laughs> uh, bing. Uh, a little more than 248. I'm going to keep mine where it was, though. I think that's reasonable. Let's go that. Uh, that's pretty much 248.50. When? October 22nd. I'm going to cut that in half to be wrong. October 15th. I need a week to be wrong. Pew. Why am I doing that? Time. Look at this time value. This looks great. We usually try to keep our risk around 250 to 300 as a group. So I'm only going to get two contracts here. Makes it a little harder for scaling. What's the solution? Well... Certainly, you could go one further out of the money, and you could do three of those. You could see three, 300 to make 2,400, 8 to 1. 300 to make 2,100, 7 to 1. Um, now, remember, we need a little extra time to be right. So 1,900 versus 2,100. Yeah, they're both good. Actually, I kind of feel like I'd go even one further. If I'm buying it to control my risk a little easier, um, remember I'm wrong by the 15th or so, so it's about 300 in risk. What do you think? What do you guys think about this? Um, let me go find some comments. Um, Darren, is Darren still here? Did we lose Darren? Darren's like, you got to the advance and I bounced, buddy. I'm out. Well, I hope at one point I can convince him. Does anyone have any questions about these options? Uh, Glenn popped in. Hey, Glenn. Good to see you. Yeah, this is just a speculative out-of-the-money call. What am I looking for? Can, can Apple break out? Can Apple break out? That's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to go with... Wait, why did I put CMG here? We voted Apple. Nobody caught that? Oh, you guys. That was a test. I was testing to see if anyone was paying attention. Pay, pay, I told you, paying attention. No one was. That was a pretty subpar test, but all right, let's keep going. Stop range, what are we saying? Uh, I went with 22020. I mean, certainly you have plenty of room to give that a little more if you wanted to, right? Depending on. I'd say even another 1% below that. 218 to 22020. 20. That's my range. 22020 is what we're going with, but I think you could 218. Do -do -do. Got quiet in here, you guys. Are you mesmerized? Are you uh, thinking about it? Are you playing with it on your end? What are your thoughts? Target is two four eight fifty. Bam. Take pro ah. Let's take a let's put a take profit target in here. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Let's add it. I would say. This uh, 237 mark from this old high. Yeah? 237. Okay. So that was two, what did we say? 223. 220, 237. 
Let's now reorder. No, set slices to charts. Sorry. Pop. Okay. There is the potential trade. You can see we're looking for this. It hasn't gotten the hike in Asha yet. Remember what we said? We would love if we could get into the last red candle on the hike in Asha. And it's always, well, how do you know it's the last red? Well, I don't know. But look at this. Looks like it could be, doesn't it? We have a stop below us. We have a target a little above and then another target above that. We're getting great reward to risk ratio. Um, I like it. I like it. I want to hear from you guys, though. I mean, it can't just be about me all the time. Most of the time is fine. We can all live with that. So, yeah, I like this a little better. I'm willing. Now, look, I want you to notice something about these two. Okay, let's go back to this for just a second because they're both risking about the same $300, right? What's the difference, though? The difference is um, here I'm losing $1,250 versus... 1278 actually I was trying to illustrate a point and it didn't really help all that much they're both pretty contained for for theta to be fair yeah I'm actually comfortable with either one of these so I'm gonna get rid of this and this will be the dog that I pick um, tight spreads look at that 65,000 contracts of open interest plenty of business Right? Plenty of business for everyone. Um, let's put this in. 245 strike. I totally saved this wrong. Um, I'll just put Apple and delete the other one. See what happens when you guys don't catch when I give you tests it makes things more difficult just saying if you could try to do it 223 nope I don't know why I keep going to 223 you guys 237 time in trade two weeks but that's about 10 days so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say mm, Eight to 12 days. Give it a little extra space. The reward to risk ratio. The stock reward to risk ratio, remember, is 248.50 minus, yeah, I don't know what that, 248.50 minus, I don't know what that was about, 224. 75 so I'm gonna go with that 2275 225 75 minus 220 225 75 minus 220 20 555 555 22 75 divided by 555. Four to one, four point oh nine. Stock does even better. Relatively, relatively low. Ball assessment, we're gonna say cheap enough. Preferred strategy, long calls. Anyone disagree? Expiration month. November. 24. Sample trade. 265. 
nope, 245 calls, 245 calls, or strike, 245 dollar strike, approximate cost at trigger, I'm going to say 175 just to be a little safe. Risk per contract. About a hundred bucks. Okay, we'll go with that. They're out of the money, so it's going to be, you can see it's 175 a contract. Because they're out of the money, they're going to be a little bit more than 50% risk. 100 versus 175, more like 60% technically at risk in that scenario. Uh, that's, uh, that's a thought process. Give me your thoughts. Give me your questions. Give me your concerns. What will have this come out? I'll probably watch the futures tomorrow, watch the open, and then see if we want to just go ahead and smash it out there. Um, I will do similar process. That's the process right there. What are we doing? We're looking to make sure that we're bouncing. We're getting candles that indicate price action moving higher, bouncing off support levels with stochastics crossing in oversold areas. We're seeing right. So there's we're seeing good technical information that says what we expect it to bounce and go. And if we can get a pattern similar to the last one, this is what we can get. This is how we can do stops. This is how we can get everything lined up. Um, there it is. You have like a minute or two if you have any dying questions that you want answered about trading and not, not much else. <laughs> All right, well, I'm looking for more. I am looking for a bullish fall. I'm excited for it. Things have been going well. I'm looking for them to continue going well. Those watching the recording at home, sorry you weren't able to make it. Those of you watching live, uh, give me a sense. If I put the trade out, if I put the alert out, are you going to take it? If I don't put the alert out, are you going to take it? Um how, how do you like it? Scale from 1 to 10. Rate this Apple alert in its present form. If you're lower than a 7, what is your concern? That's the final exercise. Real quick, critical thinking. 8 for David. I like that. I, I, I like it. Is, it. is it the best trade we've ever seen? No, but it's got a great reward to risk ratio. It's in a good area. Market's good. I... I I would have to agree with an eight. Lee says eight. Dan says eight. All right. It's an eight. We need five for a quorum. An eight or higher. Do you see it five or higher? Eight or higher? Put your thumb in. Let us know. Hey, it's good to see everybody. Like I said, Glenn tomorrow. Glenn will be here with you in the morning. Um, doing, the, doing the market open. So you'll actually see Glenn twice tomorrow. So there's, look, there's... You're starting to see Glenn like you see me twice in a day. Uh, so you'll have him on the market open. You'll have him on the market close. Thursday, you get a little bit of both of us. Friday, you get a little bit of both of us. Um, so, uh, and, and again, keep an eye out for alerts this week because I think we saw plenty of potential in demonstrable show-ups or setups. Good. Glad to hear it, Dan. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you all. Have a great rest of your night. And uh, as always, happy trading.